Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about using the smudge tool. As you know, blending paint is going to be one of the most fundamental techniques required for digital illustration. If you're just starting out, the smudge tool seems like, well, it's a pretty reasonable choice. Especially if you've been doing lots of graphite drawing, smudging in order to blend is pretty standard. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the smudge tool functions and why it might not be the best choice for blending paint but it still does have its uses and we'll look over those special cases. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So here I've got two areas of color on the left and on the right, I have sort of a same colors, but with some blending in between them. And this is something that you're going to want to achieve very often. Now I'm going to use the smudge tool on the left to try and achieve that same result. I have the smudge tool set to about 80% strength. And you can see what happens here is it's almost like I'm pushing the paint. I'm going to zoom in and show this up close. So it's as if the two colors are both very wet and I'm sort of dragging a stick from the blue to the darker purple. It's not really blending so much as shoving. Now I'm going to actually put in an extra little stripe here. I'm going to show you one more example to really make this pronounced. So when you look at that, it's just pushing one color through to the next, but it's still retaining those stripes. It's almost like if you've done marbling in a little metal tray with some marbles and some wet paint, this is the effect. Pretty interesting, but not really what you want for blending. Now, sure, you can change the effect by lowering the strength of the tool. So here I'll lower it to about 25%. And you can see it's different. But even though the intensity is less, it's still the same general effect. It's like I'm pushing the paint through the other paint. Not so useful. It's going to be hard to make that clean, blended look. Because what I'm looking for is this look here on the right where I have a very smooth, almost like a gradient from one color to the other. And as I've shown in the other blending videos, that is much more easily achieved using the brush tool and the eraser tool, and often a few extra layers. So this asks the question, well, is the smudge tool a complete waste for digital painting? Well, I don't think so. Knowing that it creates this sort of rippling effect with paint, there are some situations where this is actually exactly what you need. Look at this example of water bending light. If you look here at the very edge of this water in a glass, it's sort of distorting what I'm seeing through the water. This refraction effect is distortion that actually looks a lot like what the smudge tool is doing naturally. Because all of the colors are still visible, they've just been sort of pushed and bent. Another time I find this extremely useful is when I'm doing special effects. So you might remember this guy from previous videos, but what if I wanted to add a little more distortion into these magic effects? Well, I might zoom in here and use the smudge brush because I can allow its marbling, light bending properties to push the paint around as if it were really wet. So you could see that could be really useful for certain cases. It's more of a specialized brush. And I should also mention that you can change the brush tip shape and also have a different effect with that. So here I'm going to use a bit of a rake and you can see what that does. So hopefully you can see that the smudge tool is not ideal for your standard blending tool, but when it is useful, it can be really useful and might be the only way to achieve that specific look. So there's one more thing I want to add about when you actually use the smudge brush, and that is to avoid working destructively because it might be natural to use the smudge brush on the actual layers you want to smudge. So here I would select layer one, do my smudging, and that would be the end of it. But the better way to do that is to actually do it on its own layer. So I'm going to undo those, make a new layer, and make sure that sample all layers is checked in the brush properties. So now what I can do is smudge with the exact same results but what I've done is make the smudging on its own layer and I have not affected the layer underneath. And I can make that even more apparent by moving this top layer. 
So you can see that the smudging itself happened on its totally own layer. And when I move it back into place, you could never tell the difference. So just like a lot of other things in Photoshop, you could either work destructively and hope it works out okay, or you can work in a way that'll give you a few more options. So here, if I don't like it, I can either delete the whole layer and it's gone completely, or I can erase part of that layer and have much stronger control over the way that smudge is used in the final image. And once again, that option is called sample all layers and it's near the top of the screen. So go out there and use the smudge brush, but probably not for blending. Have fun guys. Thanks for coming to the site.